Hello. So this is a Fanatec GT2 BMW steering wheel. Uh, it has already been USB converted using a Leo Budnar uh, USB converter board. However, when I did that conversion, I only had a straight USB cable and not super great considering how it wraps around the motor. So today, I'm going to pull it back apart. I'm going to use a trip light flexible USB cable, which there they are. One of these guys. Quite a bit cheaper than buying it from uh, the sim racing websites and uh, it's actually the exact same product. They get shipped with a Leo Budnar kit. So I'm just going to cut the end off of that. I'll show you which wire goes where and then briefly just reassembling. Sorry about the cluttered bench. I've been uh, benchmarking the RTX 3070 quite a bit. All right, so the four main screws that hold this bad boy on are removed. I really thought that was it, but apparently the two little guys up here are also integral. Are they the same size? Nope. They are two millimeter instead of two and a half. So I can't really show you this, but I'm going to pull the paddle shifter connectors out of the side of the board. Fairly easy to do. Lever it up. Sorry about my noisy kitty being noisy. That's just the thing he does. Um, so now I'll come down to a very small Phillips. This is a double zero. And I'm going to remove the old uh, cable stuff here. So connection GND, it'll either be a black wire or a bare metal wire. Uh, data plus will be green. Data minus is white. And plus five volt is uh, red. For the actual power. <clears throat> so on this device it'll be red, white, green, black for most cables. Just gonna go ahead and pull this bad boy out. You won't have to touch any of your Leo Bardenar board other than that. So I'm sure I'll repurpose that cable for something else at some point, but I'm going to cut the type B connector off of this cable and use it. Always fun cutting brand new stuff apart. And I actually have jacks for this, so I should hang on to it. But <clears throat> strip the sheathing. Being very careful. Yeah, and this cable, I really en I enjoy the fact that it has a completely skinned in PVC ground cable. So first we'll do 5 volt plus the red wire. Then I'll do data plus the white wire. Data minus the green wire. Pretty sure that's right. Oh, I had that backwards, sorry. Um, correct order, but wrong function. So the white is data minus, green is data plus. It was always so impressive to me in USB 2.0 how they got 480 megabits essentially just through two wires. The multiplexing is 
Impressive considering that was a, I think, year 2000 standard? Maybe 2001? Now whenever you see a USB 2.0 port, you're like, wow. Living in the past. So I'm actually going to feed this through the existing captured zip tie I had. Always a nice bonus when I don't have to be super invasive. And again, red. 5 volt plus. Uh, there we go, white, data minus. Green data plus. I'm going to do my best to not completely block the camera as I do this, but it's very close quarter fiddly work. So I cinch these down. And finally, we've got ground, which of course is the black wire. And now, before I go too crazy, plug it in to make sure it's registered. And for that, I use the Windows Game Controller. Yep, so I show a formula wheel. Yep, everything's perfect. So I'll disconnect that cinch up this zip tie just a little bit more, which I deliberately left a little loose last time I had this open just because I knew I was going to be opening it up again. Um, and begin the arduous process of reinstalling everything, starting with the, actually starting with the paddle shifter <laughs> cables. You find out real quick that you didn't plug those back in if you're driving anything other than a manual uh, vehicle. A little bit tricky. These wheels were not designed with serviceability in mind, but that is okay. Ideally, you just open it up once for the USB converter if you're using an aftermarket direct drive like I am. And then all is well for the life of the controller. Put that in the double zero. And go back to the two mil. Let me close out of my game controller thing here. Uh, all right. So back, like I said, to the two millimeters on the way top. This steering wheel has a lot of hours on it. I bought it used. And it, you know, it functions perfectly and the suede's in okay condition but definitely needed a little bit of love all the plastic on the back is super sticky like an exotic car interior from the 90s but overall a pretty nice piece yet oh i don't think that went back on quite right these have a definite uh, positive engagement feel when everything is correct. Oh, I see. It's unhappy about where I'm feeding the cable out of it. There we go. <laughs> it's really sticky. Hello, Jada. Hi. Hi. Noise potato kitty. So again, the two upper back screws are two millimeter Allens. Hi, kitten. How are you doing? Hi. 
Hej. And on the front, two and a half, four of them. I would recommend Loctite on these. I did not do that last time, and with the direct drive on 100%, and after about 10 hours on the wheel, we were uh, definitely experiencing some loosening of the screws. So I'm gonna go as tight as I can with this like electronics screwdriver, which probably isn't ideal. It is fastening into metal, so it's probably okay. That is it. Everything's all tightened down as it should be. Ta da! So, yeah. Nice flexible cord I can use to go over top of the wheel. Plug into the USB hub, and it supports you know plenty of flexion for the three turns that this thing can muster. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.